Okay guys, welcome to the second video. And this video is all about crack propagation and how crack propagation occurs in ceramic materials. So we've already looked at metals, but let's take a look at ceramics. How do ceramics respond to mechanical deformation? Well, if we look at the stress-strain diagram for a ceramic material, what we see is that the ceramic, if we load it, will elastically deform and then suddenly break. There's no transition to a plastic deformation. And the reason that it breaks is due to crack propagation. So if we look, and we, we try to take a look at a material, at a ceramic material, if we have a sample that is perfect in every way, and is not, uh, has, doesn't have any defects in it, and we load that material up mechanically, so we put stress on the outside of the material, and we put, you know, to balance it out so it doesn't go flying up into oblivion. So if we look at the force inside of the material as it's flowing, it'll flow, it'll look something like this. Uniform stress throughout the material. And if we take a look here, or here, or here, or indeed anywhere inside of the material, our stress is equal to force over area, and it'll be uniform. So this is an idealized case. Now, materials aren't ideal, especially, well, actually, metals that have cracks in them. But metals have the advantage of being, being able to be deformed plastically. But a ceramic, a ceramic doesn't have that luxury. And so, if we take a look at a ceramic material that we cut kind of a notch into, and we see how the stress would flow through this material, given a very uniform stress distribution, we'd see something very interesting. We'd see that away from this notch, we'd have very uniform stress, right, exactly what we saw before, but the stress that goes through this part of the material will now have to flow around that notch. This is very similar to water flowing around a dam. So if you have ever gone to a river, and you build your own dam, you take water, you take uh, rocks, put it in the way of the river, and the water will have to flow around that obstruction. In this case, it's the absence of material that the force is flowing around. Now, if we look at an even more extreme case, where our notch, instead of being um, nice and shallow, is very sharp, we will have something very similar if we load it up with a uniform stress. We will see that the flow around that notch, that new extreme notch, is exacerbated. Now, in this material, 
if we look at this region, we'll have the same stress as this region, which will have the same stress as this region, which will have the same stress as this region. But in the region where this pileup occurs, this pileup of stress flow, you'll have a very, very, very high concentration of force in a very, very small area. And this is called stress concentration. Now we have a way to describe this stress concentration and describe a material's ability to resist growth of this crack because that stress is very high there. We can rip the material apart very easily. And so the parameter that we use is called the it's called K1C. It's called the fracture toughness. And this is the term that we use to compare different materials and understand how resistant to crack propagation they are. So if we have a material that has a crack in it, this is a surface crack, we can also have a material that has an internal crack. We call the length of this crack, for a surface crack, as A, and we call the length of an internal crack 2A. You can think of this as two cracks back to back inside the material. And our K1C value, or our fracture toughness, is equal to y times sigma, where sigma is the stress um, applied to the material on the outside, times the square root of pi times a. Now again, a is the crack length. Sigma is the applied stress so if it were applied to these materials it would be applied out here and Y now most of you are probably thinking that Y is a material property but actually, in this case, y is a geometry-dependent parameter. And it depends on the way that the crack tip is and depends on the overall sample itself. So everything on the right-hand side of the equation is geometry dependent. And what that means is it's our K1C. This K1C is our material property. So material with high K1C is a, is a, is a material with high fracture toughness and is not as likely to crack as a material with low fracture toughness. So ceramics have low fracture toughness compared to metals, which have higher fracture toughnesses. 